Monday morning and we are off to Jacksonville, Florida to see uh, Dr. Stu McGill. Stu is a professor at Waterloo University in Canada and the world's leading expert on lower back pain. I actually talked to Stu uh, last year when I hurt my lower back and uh, bought his book, The Back Mechanic, and that was actually very helpful in my recovery last year. On Instagram, I think uh, Brian Carroll actually reached out to me and Brian works with Stu. Brian was the, f I think the first powerlifter or one of the first powerlifters under uh, 300 pounds to squat over a thousand pounds. Brian uh, worked with Stu on his rehab and Brian's injury was far worse than mine. I have a herniated disc and a bulging disc in my lower back. But Brian had a split uh, sacrum, I believe. He had a crushed disc where there was like complete loss of disc height, I believe was the injury, and then a herniated disc. So he was in real bad shape. He had been to multiple treatments. He was considering surgery. Uh, the surgeons told him that, you know, no matter what, he'd have to stop lifting. And, you know, he went to Stu and, you know, said, you know, my, my basically told him like in no uncertain terms that my goal is to get back and break records again one day. Stu basically said, uh, let's, uh, let's get you pain free and then see where we can go from there. I'm mostly in the pain-free part, so I feel like I'm kind of ahead already on that. Um, but I want to I want to get back to competing again. I want to get back to to uh, being a beast like I used to be, you know. But injury is not always a bad thing, you know. You can take it, and you can turn it into a positive. Uh, in fact, that's their new book, St uh, Stu and Brian. It's called The Gift of Injury. What's up? Hey, Brian. Nice to meet you. Brian, hey. good to meet you, man. Good to meet you too. Yeah, come on in. My 300 kilo squat, the Arnold, I already aggravated it. So this was the first time I aggravated that disc bulge. That was the first time it happened. It was a week out. And I was able to get well enough reading your book really kind of like took me back to that. <laughs> I don't think I was quite as extreme as you, but on the six, but the 600, I think because of the bulge and protecting that, mm -hmm. when I came up, I came up a little bit wonky. The problem is if it's an issue, yes, sometimes you need to address it because the research has shown that asymmetrical hips will lead to more back injury with the shearing. Yeah. But at the same time, if you start trying to undo what God has done with your build, your history, you might end up unleashing a bunch of issues. Well, you try to overcorrect. Lane, 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 nice, nice to meet you, nice sir. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're weighing in at? 207. Light heavy, eh? Mm -hmm. Tell me your story. In 2000, 15 preparing for the Arnold then. So I was about a week out and I had my last heavy session before the meet. And I was going to do squat, bench press, and deadlift. A 9 RP or 90% of what I would usually do. And then um, some singles after that. And those felt like they went pretty well. And then went to bench press. And I could feel on bench press that my back was getting pretty tight. Um, tighter than usual, but I kind of just thought, well, I just, you know, I've had a long, I've had a hard training session, it'll get better. And then I foolishly went to deadlift. Uh, I remember I had to pull 610 pounds for three sets of four. And I felt very tight, but the weight was moving fine and I seemed to be staying in okay position. And finished that session, went home, put some ice on it, and uh, woke up the next day and couldn't hardly move. Let's see, so that was on a Friday. The meet was the following Friday. I, and I just kind of got to Wednesday and I said, all right, I'm gonna see if I can go in and, and uh, just hit some light weights, like a 80%. You're a warrior. <laughs> I was able to do a single with 600 on squat and it felt, it felt okay. Went to the meet, um, did a 300 kilo squat there, did a 694 pound pull, ended up winning that meet and uh, was, I actually believe that is where I herniated a disc, a different one, uh, a little bit higher up. It'll be on the MRI, but I got a little bit more lopsided in that squat than I would usually do. So what we've discussed and what I was told from MRI, I think what has been the, the, the problem child, as it were, has been the disc bulge at L4, L5. The disc herniation seemed to bother me for about, I'm just guessing based on where they said it was on the MRI. Um, which disc it was. 
That seemed to bother me on and off for about six months and then it never really bothered me again. And I don't get radiating pain or, or anything to that degree. Do you still pull for reps? Uh, so what I have done now is typically when I deadlift, um, I will set, I'll set the bar down. If I'm going to pull multiple reps, I'll set the bar down, let it settle, then re-grip, take another rep. Thank so you. I'll kind of, yeah. Thank you. That was, uh, <laughs> that was something from Matt Gary yeah. said, you know, yeah. Just from a powerlifting perspective too, he said it's the only lift that's concentric only, and if you're pulling for reps, you're you're getting a you're getting that that you know that Golgi apparatus that that kind of um, that reflex that stretch reflex, and so just from a powerlifting perspective, if you're going to do something specific for what you do in a meet, he's like you should probably set it down and look at you know instead of five reps, look at it as a group of five singles. Thank you. So. That's great. That's yeah, and, and the problem too is. When you have a set of five, you can't give 100% effort to each rep when right. you're banging them out like that. So you might be locked in 100% for the first one. The second one might, who knows, you might be good. You might be the first three at 100% focus. The next one might go down to 90, 80, 85 yeah. sometimes. And then who knows where you're at on the fifth rep. Yeah. Just, it's just hard to tell. And it depends on how fatigued you are, yeah. how rested you are. Yeah, there's a lot of variables there. But tell me your past attempts at uh, getting better and uh, why or why not they, they, they were successful? Uh, well, originally I didn't really do much with it, just rested mm -hmm. and it got, it got better. Um, and then fast forward last year in October or September, I had a lot of life stress going on and uh, re-injured it again. But this time, way worse. The only way I could feel comfortable was laying on my side on the ground and it would take me from there about a minute to get to standing. That's when I bought the back mechanic started doing the big three um and that really made a difference i'm watching all of this actually <laughs> i was watching you down there and walking uh, up the stairs i know i, I read that again and i'm like i know he's watching me right yeah, now yeah. <laughs> the exam started actually when i came through <laughs> day to day now are some days better than others yeah most days are pain free now oh fabulous so, um, okay. i'm already kind of i feel like i'm i did well to get ahead of the curve on that yeah. um Great. I did get that uh, cortisone injection in my spine, but that was more so because I was so inflamed at that point, I couldn't even work. And when was that? That would have been early December. Oh, eight weeks ago. Yes. Oh, wow. Wow, that gives me a different thought in, in, in my head. Have you ever moved, doing a fairly menial task, flushing the toilet or something like that, when you uh, it, you get caught, it takes your breath away. <laughs> that kind of, is that familiar to you? Not really, it, not really. Okay, so is it, is it a dull ache that's just there on a bad day and then it, it, it goes or? or the, best, the best way I can describe it is it. If how do you describe when you felt, when you, when you reach for your kid out of your crib, out of the crib? Okay, so that's when it grabbed. goes, that's when it grabbed. goes, just I felt something give way. That's what it felt like. If you were tying your shoe, you've never felt this. No, only after it's triggered. Only after, only after I've done it under heavy load. Then oh, even okay. with my kids, it was after I'd done it under heavy load. Gotcha. That made it worse, I think, you know. Okay. Problem is the radiologist not seeing me. They didn't know what to look for when they're interpreting yeah. what they saw. They missed every single fracture yeah. that I had going on. They, they, one of the first things that Sue saw, Sue saw the fracture. He goes, you see that? I'm like, it looks like I have a fracture in my sacrum. Are you asking me see anything exactly. weird here? I <laughs> <laughs> said you split your sacrum. <laughs> Not once was it listed with the, the, the orthopedic surgeon, the radiologist, or the neurosurgeon. Wow. They, they were looking only at my disc. Could they help me or not? Could they do surgery? That was it. It's beautiful. Love feeling the back like that. <laughs> Feels fabulous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's that's beautiful. What I'm feeling for is a little kink in the curve of your spine. It's called an antalgia. You don't have one because they steal load bearing ability. Now, is it central and radiates, or does show me with your hands? It would be right here yeah. at probably a fist size, yeah. and it would be 
Just that area. Yeah, well, it's centroided right on. There's a very slight intelligent, but it's it's. You've done a great job with that. And you've had no other major surgeries or nope. implants or anything like nope. that. I had a, I tore my pec in 2008. That was all the surgery I've ever had, and other than that, pretty healthy. Yeah, and was it a torn muscle or was it a bulge from the bone? So it actually tore uh, at the muscle tendinous junction, uh, full tear. Yeah. Um, actually, more on the muscle side. Fortunately, I'd, I had one good doctor, very good orthopedic surgeon, and now I have no symptoms. You can't even hardly tell it was ever torn. Yeah, great. And so they sewed the muscle, basically. Yeah, they basically put a graph over it, and uh, yeah, in his words, kind of the nicest to have, actually. Yeah, and he, he in his words, shoelaces and bubble gum, and yeah. put it back together. Yeah. yeah. Nice and tall. Pull up on the chair, mm -hmm. and relax. Any change in symptoms? No. None. Now slouch all the way down, and I'm just gonna shape your head to there, mm -hmm. and you're feeling that uh, uncomfortableness? Yeah. It's there. Now, on top of that, I'm gonna pull on the nerve roots. Does that change any perception down your low back, better or worse? Mm, not really any difference. Okay, keep, your sh keep this shape mm -hmm. like that. I'm just gonna move your neck. Has that changed anything down your back? Not really. Okay, and I just draw up out of that position. Mm -hmm. And did that take the stress off the discomfort level? Yes. Okay, now be very chest proud. Bring it right up. No difference, better or worse? Mm, no real difference. And nothing down your back in the familiar region and nothing down your back. No. That's really good news. Okay, so there's the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the the discomfort. I'm going to take you in first. We'll drift the nerves back. And now all the way down. And now to neutral. Did you perceive anything in your low back that time? Mm -mm. And nothing in your back down in that series. Not really. Okay, do a soccer kick for me. And do it with the other leg. Good. Now, we repeat. That last one. I got you, didn't I? Just a little bit, a little bit right here. Good, you got nerve drags on. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Now, what I did was I pulled your spinal cord up by shaping your head down. Mm -hmm. uh, the first time when I put it back, the nerve dragged and you got a little tickle. The second time, I've already pulled your, ner your, your ner nerve root up mm. off what we'll see as a dynamic disc bulge. Yeah. That's why I got you to pull your nerve root through from underneath the other way. Yeah. So the next time we did it, we got it again. And I guess if I so was like all flared up, that would really hurt. It would, but yeah. right now, every time you move in a certain direction, the first time the nerve drags, mm -hmm. the second cycle, you're, you're fine. Mm -hmm. there. Yeah, do it again. It's, it's a midnight movement song. That's it. And now I just say that. Now I can that. <laughs> That's the gig. We've got it. I can feel during hyperextension. I can feel. Okay. So when you go into extension, now not there, but when you come back into extension, and is there a pinch point right at the very end there? I wouldn't call it a pinch. Just a little. It's like right. It's on the right side actually. Okay. Fabulous. I'm assuming the position there and surrender to the table. Just let all. There we go. Could you go mid chin so you take all the weight? You have to surrender. You're jacked up here. Come on, let it down, man. Breathe. Relax. Breathe it into the table. Breathe in. Now surrender. Let it go. Okay. Is that sore? Mm, not really. Good. Fabulous. Compared to that as baseline, tell me if we had something that's a bit more. Surrender your head. Come on. Push your eyebrow one pound. That's it. Beautiful. Good man. So, here's the calibration. Yeah? Mm hmm. Okay. Now, L5. Anything there? No. Fabulous. L4? Mm, just a touch. That's all I need. Don't, you're, you're, you're fighting me. Come on, breathe it out. L3. Anything there? Mm, calibrate me again. Sorry. No. We're, let me carry on. Anything there? No. Okay, and anything there? No. Okay, here we go again. I'm going to come back. There's mm -hmm. a calibration. Yep. No real pain. No. Slight discomfort on Slight, that one. Yep. Okay, squeeze your glutes and hold the table. Squeeze the bench. Now, let his legs go. Is that less pain? Is that the one that was painful before? Yes, sir. That's a little less pain. That's what you're supposed to say.